Oh, Welcome okay. to the live chat with <laughs> Josie. Introduce yourself. Okay, uh, great, great. Um, so my name is Thomas Lutuli Brickhill. I'm a filmmaker and a musician. Um, I was born in March 1978. And what school? I went to school. I went to Avondale Infants. I went to David Livingston Junior School. And I went to Prince Edward uh, High School. Um, and I, I'm a singer in, a, in an Mbira punk band called Chiquata 263. And uh, I'm a, a filmmaker, uh, writer, director, producer. Okay, so you're your father, you're a husband. Um, I'm, I'm neither of those things. Ah, are you searching? <laughs> I, I do have a girlfriend. Okay, interesting. Um, yes. Congratulations, that's fine. Thank you. Okay. So um, let's, talk, let's talk about Cook Off. Hmm. Where did, that, where did that inspiration come from? How did it come to you? How did it come to your mind? How did it begin? Who was behind that idea? Um, well, I think, I think for me, like, um, you know, I, my, my, I, I have a, a very much a, uh, a good relationship with food. Um, I grew up in, in a house where um, my mom and my, my grandmothers on both sides, my, my dad's side and my mom's side, um, were, were often in the kitchen cooking. So for me, it's like a very natural part of life. I mean, for everyone, I think it's a very inclusive thing. Um, but I was actually, so I was uh, working on a television show in Zimbabwe uh, called Battle of the Chefs. Um, and in, in between filming for the show, uh, basically, you know, just th this concept that like, how, what, what would happen if, if uh, you know, a really underdog contestant came onto the show and how could that now create an interesting uh, narrative device? So the concept kind of came from there. Okay. So when did you start working on this project? Um, wow. Um, probably, I mean, the, the very beginning, as in the first time I, I kind of thought about it and started putting pen to paper, we're talking back in 2016. So did you think by then that it would make it, its way to Netflix? Um, wow. I mean, look, obviously when you, when you do stuff, you do it with, with, uh, you know, with big dreams, with, with big intentions. But, but realistically, thinking that that would happen, um, I mean, certainly when we were making the film, considering that, uh, you know, the, the resources that we had and, you know, for, for me, well, for lots of the crew, it was our first feature. So I, I, don't, think, I don't think we really thought, you know, we were going straight to, in, into the big platforms, you know, to, to play with the big guys, uh, not on our first feature. So what are, the, what are some of the challenges that you'd say you faced um, for Cook Off the movie to come to reality? Um, well, look, I'd say like, you know, for any, for any filmmaker, like anywhere in the world, um, number one, making a film is a big challenge. You know, it's making a feature is a serious undertaking. Even if you have like, you know, uh, all the resources and a great budget and whatever, it's still a challenge and films still, you know, fail to get completed or fail to get made because it's such a complicated task uh, to do. Um, then on top of that, making a low budget film has its own challenges because, you know, suddenly uh, you, you, you can't just make, you know, make decisions on a purely creative basis, but you have to be realistic about what you have to work with. And then I think on top of all of that, uh, in Zimbabwe specifically, and it's something that me and Joe um, have often talked about, that we don't have a film industry in Zimbabwe. We basically, we have, a few, we have a few passionate filmmakers who maybe are part of a film community, but we're in the process of trying to build a film industry. So, uh, sorry, yes, sorry, you yeah, jump so in. I was actually going to ask you that, that 
what would you say about the film industry in Zimbabwe? Do you think that people understand the importance of film in Zimbabwe? Um, I mean, look, I think people understand the importance of it. But, but the challenge now is when I think of a film industry, right, that, that has like a lot of other, it has other companies and other parts which, which are not directly in like, not every company that, that feeds off the film industry is a film production company. You know, you, for instance, have catering companies that specialize in catering for film sets. You have... Uh, you know, uh, people who do location scouting who don't actually work on the film. Their entire livelihood, uh, what, how they make money is from like traveling around and suggesting potential locations to filmmakers. So when I think of a film industry, it should have all of those elements because as the filmmaker, those are the things that make my job easier. So we don't have those, not, not by, you know, not by any stretch of the imagination. So hence the reason I would say, like, we definitely don't yet have a film industry. I think we have great potential to build a film industry, but it's something, it's something that we have to be honest and realistic about, you know, uh, and not, not try to claim that we have something that is still a spark. So did you get sponsorship for this movie? No, no. Um, this movie was, uh, so I, again, it's something that I think me and Joe agree on a lot, that we want to try and get more commercial investment into films, rather than films which are sponsored by, you know, NGOs or, or good goodwill, you know, good wishes. Um, because because when, when a film has money involved in that it has investment involved, then there's a different kind of pressure to make a quality product because you have people who you've made promises to and they're expecting you to deliver something. So obviously in the case of this, I mean, as I've said, it was a low budget film. So it's not like we had huge amounts of investment, but we, we've taken our investors very seriously that, you know, if we've said to them, we are going to do our utmost best to make a good enough film that we have a realistic chance of returning, you know, something on their investment, then that's the commitment that we have to make as professionals. So we did have, we did have one, uh, I wouldn't, I mean, not sponsorship so much, but we had one, one product out of the many that we approached um, who came on board with a little bit of like product placement within the movie and that's a local uh, chili sauce called Dr. Okay. Trouble in Zimbabwe. So they sponsored us with a, a couple of crates of, of their chili sauce and a, and a little donation into the film budget. Okay, so obviously we'll say you are the heroes of film or you're the gurus of film in Zimbabwe. And if some people also want to get into, film, into the film industry for their movies to make it to Netflix, what would you say is the procedure? What are the requirements? How did you guys do it? Um, look, I think, I think it's not, there's not been like a single moment where we could say like, oh, cool, now, now we're on our way to, to Netflix. Well, apart from maybe announcing. <laughs> but, okay. you know, realistically, um, I mean, the film, the very first version of the film that we screened was way back uh, at the very end of uh, 2017. Um, we had our international like festival premiere uh, at the beginning of 2018 uh, in Rotterdam. But at that stage, that, the, like, that film, it was still like a director's cut of the film, right? So it was complete, but the film that you would see now has changed so much. It's, it's be, really been polished the sound had to be remixed, the picture had to be regraded, the film had to be re-edited, and all of these things we were doing to try and raise the bar because we knew we had a good product, right? But it's, 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 it's like a diamond, right? You, you, you have a valuable stone, but until you cut it and polish it, 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 you can't sell it in a jewelry store. So it's the same with film. It's like you can have a good quality story 
something that works, that's captivating. But we had to put that extra layer of polish onto the final product. And that actually took a long time um, and, and a lot more artistic input into the project um, than, than, you know, it's not like you just make a film and then, ah, oh, cool, now I want my film to go to Netflix. No, you make a film and then you work and work and work to get it to that level where, where they can even take notice of you. Okay, so what is the role of a director? Um, all right, I think a director is basically, they're, they're the person who, who must have the, the vision of what the final product is going to be in their head whilst we're on set filming. Okay, so, so every moment of a film set, various people, be it the, the director of photography, be it the art department who do the set designs or the wardrobe department or, you know, any, or the actors are coming to you as the director and asking you questions, i.e., okay, uh, sh should, should the actor have this red top or this blue top in the next scene? And, or should this, what, you have to have it all in your head to be able to answer all of those questions. So th that means basically as the director, you constant, you, you, the film is alive before it gets completed. So nope. you then have to be able to communicate. And it's one of the most important things that a director can, can do or should be able to do is now to communicate that vision to the many artists that you're collaborating with, that you're working with, from the actors who, you know, they'll give you a performance, but now as the director, you have to be able to, to think about the plot of the story and remember where that scene fits into the whole story to be able to give them the right direction to say, okay, that's great, but for this scene, actually, I need you to lift it up more because you know of the dynamics of the whole film, where that scene lands, it has to be more exciting. Or sometimes, actually, can you tone it down a bit? Because this is like a quieter part of the film and we want to bring the energy levels down for this scene. You have to have all of that stuff in your head all the time for the duration of, of, of the filming, which in our case was, was like about a month and a half. Okay, so, you know, in, we, in Nigeria, there is Nollywood. Um, I think in South Africa, there is Zansi Magic. There is a lot of people creating film in South Africa, in Nigeria. Where do you think Zimbabweans are getting it wrong? Because, I mean, our film industry is nothing to write home about. Um, I, see, I think we, have, we do have a lot of the, of the skills, the talent, the natural talent that you need, be it in the acting side or in the crews, like we have that stuff. Um, I think, okay, with, with equipment, like it's become much more available and much more accessible over, you know, over time. Digital technology has certainly opened up filmmaking to, you know, a much bigger, wider range of people. But I think, um, again, and sorry to keep referencing this, but there's a lot of, this st of the questions you're asking me that are stuff that me and Joe have spoken about at length. And I think one of the things with film is that you don't just wake up one day and decide to be a filmmaker and then think like, okay, great, I'm going to make my first film and I'm going to become a millionaire and it's going to be amazing. You know, for me, this is my first feature film as a writer-director, but I've been working in film and television for 19 years, you know? So I started at the bottom. I was a, a, a sound recordist, a camera assistant, you know, an editing assistant, a lighting assistant. And I slowly moved up the, the, the ladder, learned new skills. And part of that for me was understanding that if I wanted to be a really good director, then I needed to understand what everybody on my set was doing. What's their job? What are they capable of? Like, so you know what I mean? If, if you don't understand how the lighting works, then you can't really communicate your vision to the lighting guy because you don't, you don't know the right terminology or you don't know what is possible for them to do. But once yeah. you understand their job, 
then you can tell them, okay, cool, I, I like this light that's coming in, but you know, can you flag it off so that it doesn't hit the background? Like I can very simply and easily communicate that. Um, so I, I, think, I think you have to, you have to pay your dues. You have to be ready to work for a decent amount of time that you're actually going to get the experience that you need. I mean, the same with Joe. He's, he's not new in this game, you know. Uh, he's been making films for, for a while. And I think that's the thing is you have to um, understand. And it's not, a, it's not a criticism to the new people coming in, but that you, you mustn't expect instant success. So do you find, do you see yourself and Joe, of course, um, studying at film school or maybe mentoring some youths in Zimbabwe? Um, I th well, uh, I'm not sure about starting a film school. Uh, that's a bit of a, I mean, that's a whole nother commitment. I mean, yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, in, but in terms, of, in terms of mentoring, um, I think, I mean, both of us have, have already and continue to do that. Um, just earlier on uh, at the beginning of this year, um, I, was, I was doing a couple of lectures on directing for another um, like film class that was happening in Harare. Um, I've taught at UZ. Um, I've, I've, you know, I've, I, think, I think if you, if you are a genuine filmmaker and you're passionate about it, you're always trying to pass on those skills. And even on the film set itself, the same way that, as I said, I learned at the very beginning, you know, I was an assistant. I was learning off the person who was teaching me that particular job. So still, that's the same way. It's like, uh, actually, if you want to work, learn, if you want to learn about film, you first try and get yourself onto a film set by any means possible. And often that means at the beginning, like the first jobs that I did, Sometimes you would go on a film set and you're excited to be there, but then you find that you spend the whole day making tea and coffee for people and directing traffic. And you're saying, how am I on a film set? I haven't even seen the camera. The guys who are filming are over there somewhere, you know? But, but that's, you kind of show your commitment to it. And the other people who work on the film set, like they see that you really are genuine, you're passionate about it. And as I said, it takes time and you get brought in. So the same way we try to bring in new youngsters onto the film set, whichever project is happening, and pass on those same skills. We all start somewhere. So when do we um, expect to see, to watch, cook off on Netflix? Um, I'm, I'm afraid I'm not prepared to give you a straight answer to that question. Um, what I am prepared to say is that we're talking weeks, not months. Oh, interesting. <laughs> I can't wait. Every morning I go and I check on Netflix if it's there because I am eagerly waiting to watch Cook Off on Netflix. I mean, I am so excited. I am so, so proud, proud of you guys. That's why I had to look for you to have a chat with you because, I mean, this is one of those good things that you see coming out, out of your country. And I'm really, really excited. And I really want to say congratulations, Thomas. This is, um, I mean, out of this world. Thank you. Thank you so much. And, and you, I, we're not going to disappoint you. I mean, I know it's exciting to be on Netflix, but I'm very confident that when you actually finally get to, to watch the film, like the weight and the excitement and the hype and why everything will all be very much worth it. Thank you. So the moment it starts, of course, I'll be one of the first few people to watch it. Then I'll bring you again with Joe so that we discuss about it. I mean, feedback and stuff like that. Please, that would be really wonderful. And I look forward to it. Thank you. Thank you so much. So now we bring in Joe to just say a word or two. But because I think you have actually covered it all. But I'm sure as a producer, he has also something to say. Oh, no, no, no. Joe always, Joe always has something, something to add. Even if I think I've said it all, uh, Joe will remember the things that I've forgotten. <laughs> all right. No problem. So see you soon and talk to you soon, Thomas. Take a care. A pleasure. Thank Stay you. Soon. Thank you. Okay. Thank I'm going to log out. Okay. Hey. Hello. 
<laughs> How are you? I'm very good. Good. It's a pity it we couldn't all be on the same platform. I don't know what happened. Technology happened. I know. Technology, hey, where's two babies? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but anyway, there's always another option. So welcome to Live Chat with Josie. Thank you. And it's good to see you, eh? Good to see you too. And congratulations. I'm so, so Thank proud of you. I mean, you know we are bad. You. Thank you. <laughs> no, you know, you know where the journey comes from. <laughs> I know, I know. And I was like, yeah, oh, wow. Look at Joe. <laughs> you, know, you, know, you, know, you know, the Shona Rano Sumu Zama Rombe Kuba Muguruva. Amen. Amen. Oh, I'm proud, Amen. I'm, I'm proud yeah. of you, my brother. But anyway, you know, we have, I have a lot of my brothers and sisters from Nigeria, from all over the place that are watching us right now. So I will have to ask you, it's a culture here to introduce yourself. Ah. Uh -huh. So my name is John Jagu. <laughs> I'm a Zimbabwean filmmaker. <laughs> uh, I've been a filmmaker for yo 16 years now, <laughs> uh, and I've made uh, a number of uh, feature films here in Zimbabwe. Uh, and I'm, I specialize. I could say I'm a director, writer, uh, and Kukov was. Uh, my first time as lead producer on this. Uh, we, we love to call it like the, the movie of, of firsts, where I was, it was my first time lead producing. It was Tom's first time directing a feature. It was Tendi, the lead actress, first time being a lead actress. It was Ten Diamond's first time being a lead. <laughs> it was Sebastian <laughs> Laleman's first time. So like ev everything just added up to be like this crazy bunch of creatives coming in. You know, uh, it's Zoe Flood's first time to come on as producing EP. So it's just like on a, on, a, on a feature film. So we're all coming together to bring out this fresh Zimbabwean product that we want to represent to the world. I give you guys a stand ovation. I, I, I mean, congratulations, guys. I'm proud of you. Ten Diamonds, everybody else, Zoe, everyone. I wish you were here. I would actually just bring you randomly. But I'm not sure who is here right now. I mean, it's a Saturday, but all of you guys, a huge congratulations. So how does it so feel? I mean, the first so we should be watching. <laughs> Who's watching? Zoe, Zoe should be there somewhere, I'm sure. We'll, we'll find I'm, out. <laughs> but she might not be <laughs> But Zoe, if you're watching us and if you are ready to come after Joe, just let me know. Just... Just send a comment. I'm reading all the comments and, and I'll read. But Joe, how does it feel, I mean, to have the first film that you're producing now going on Netflix? Uh, I know, like, I think like what Tom said, right? Uh, the journey has been long. We made the film in 2017 and this is three years later. Eh? So, hmm. and we've not been around, like just waiting for that phone call from Netflix to say, hey, you're on Netflix, right? There's been a lot of work that's been put in uh, into the film. Uh, the film has gone through like several international film festivals, over 20 festivals, uh, managing to scoop uh, a bunch of awards, uh, which helped in giving the film weight, you know, like for you to be able to sell it. Like it, it's got that weight, right? Uh, so the feeling, yes, it's excitement. Yes, it's all that. But it's almost for me like a, like a sigh, like, like, okay, you know, like you've been running for miles and miles and then you reach a stop where, whoo, light at the end of the tunnel. Uh, so, so it's, it's a mixed bag of feelings where you're like, okay, this is done. History has been made, but the future still awaits. So that burden of like what we have to do to keep this going, because it's not just about one film. It's about turning the film community back in Zimbabwe and making it into an industry. So that's a big yeah. mammoth task that, that we face, that Tom faces, that Zoe faces, that every, every member of this team who was part of the film faces to keep up to that, you know, like we can't be like, oh, five years ago, there was that one film that was on Netflix and that was it. No, 
Like, we're saying, no, let's start. Pull up our sleeves. Let's go to work. Like, the real work begins. We've set the benchmark. Now let's keep up. Mm. No, I'm, I'm, you are really telling the truth because I actually had, uh, I, I'm just remembering now, I think I had a discussion with Zoe behind the scenes. We exchanged emails and we spoke about this. But how did it feel that day when you finally got the email, the phone call? I'm not sure how Netflix got in touch with you guys to say, yippee, <laughs> who comes in, will be on Netflix. How was it like? Uh, obviously, you're like, you don't believe it at first. <laughs> like, was it an email? How, how did it happen yeah like so it's the email that comes in right oh wow <laughs> and, and you thought you thought maybe your email has been hacked or something right I remember Tom Zo and Zoe like we went for coffee <laughs> we're like hmm let's talk about it <laughs> and, wow. and you know you act cool you act cool, uh -huh. like you don't just, yeah, cool, we'll take the offer, you know. So you act cool, like, oh, okay, cool, we'll get back to you, we'll think about it, you know, like. And it yes, was, it was such. <laughs> yeah. Playing at the board. So, so, so it was, quite, it was quite, it was quite, like, for the, for the work that had been put in, right, it was quite a good reward, you know. And, 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 and you know, like, and, and, and I remember, uh, Tom asking me, like, so, what do you think, right? And then I say to him, uh, I think I'm talking to the first director to have a film on Netflix from Zimbabwe. You know, that's, all, that's, that's what I say to him, you know. So it's, 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 quite, it's quite amazing and it's quite a good feeling, but it's also a challenge upon us, yeah. In a challenge in what way? Sorry? A challenge in what way? A challenge in in keeping up. In, 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 in. Like right now, the world is is about to be introduced to Zimbabwean films, right? And we need to keep feeding hunger. Like we we shouldn't stop. So that challenge of keeping up, where because we're coming from a background where there's there's no industry in Zim, right? And and the way we made cook off, right? Like cook off is it's like, it's like cook off is like a meal just made with love, with so much love from different people, right? And you're hoping that this will open enough doors uh, for for us not to repeat the same uh, suffering we endured whilst we made cook off. Like like you, like things should be should be better. Like like we should have like a bigger budget, like things should be more, we should have other problems other than a budget, you know? So, so that's that thing where now we're looking forward to making the next one. We're looking forward to making another one and, and hoping that they're all going on the platform and we keep it going and we, and that's can revive the industry, create employment rather than this, having just a one hit one and then things stop. So, so we are, the whole team is aware that, you know what, we've got this task, this has happened, but we're not going to stop. Let's keep up. Let's keep going. Let's keep pushing until the industry is there, pretty much. Okay. So earlier on, I asked Thomas that when can we expect Cook Off uh, Zim or Netflix? And he said weeks, not months. I also saw you commenting weeks and not months. But after this, are you guys working on another film or a movie? What is going on? Yeah, yeah, we've got we've got a slate of 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 of, of, of films already. Uh, we have we have we have we have movies, we have series that we are currently working on. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. And I also asked him that: um, Are you guys planning a film school or mentoring? He told me that film school not yet, but mentoring you guys have been doing it. So, do you have some yeah. youth people that you've also been trying to bring into this industry? Definitely. So, so we've actually we've actually started uh, uh, like what is, like a like a challenge, like a forty eight hour challenge, like like to just sort of like uh, discover new talent. Uh, we actually did it like three weeks ago, and it was so amazing the participation. Like we almost we had over one hundred and twelve participants, you know, young filmmakers that we didn't even know about. So that's how we can try and harness, you know, like 
young upcoming talent that's coming up. So yeah, that's in the works, like workshops, even in productions, getting, making sure that we, we, get, we take interns to be part of our productions. That's part of our mantra as well. All right, and then is there any sponsorship now coming in since you guys are going on the biggest platform in the world? <laughs> uh, I, I think I can say that the response uh, has been overwhelming and amazing from, from people, even the corporate world. Uh, it, and, and it's so amazing how this hasn't been taken like a cook-off is coming to Netflix thing. People are, are like saying, we are going to, to Netflix. Like it's, it's being taken it's as a Zimbabwe national thing. I know, yeah, I know so, my fellow people. <laughs> exactly. So, so that interest, like it's it's good and it's generating. Like if you're if you're approaching even corporate, it's a different conversation now because they can see the potential. Like even even to government, even on a policy level, like you, you're having a different conversation because even like it it makes it easier to get into the into the doors of of wherever you're trying to get in. So yeah, so so I I, I expect things to be a little bit easier going forward. Yeah, that was actually going to be my next question, that do you now find it easy to work with government, I mean, Minister Kesti Coventry, in terms of arts, to at least boom, boost the um, film industry in Zimbabwe? I think that's, that's, that's the plan. And, and their support, like even uh, yesterday, we had a live with the minister, uh, and she did a live with, uh, with the lead cast, with Tendi and Ten, and that interest alone, that's something that never used to happen in the past, you know. So I think this opportunity can be used uh, for the government to see what the industry, the potential it has. Like right now, Cook-Off is going to be showing on Netflix around the world. So that's selling a Zimbabwean image. But we need, like, it's, it's, it can be used in many ways. Zimbabwe has been, like, portrayed negatively for a very long time around the world. And film is a very big tool that we can use to rebrand our nation, you know, because you can do that in film. We're using film. Mm. All right. Thank yeah. you so much. I am so excited. Like I said, I am looking forward to this. And I mean, please let me know. At least, at least be kind enough to text me two days before. So I'll be one of the first ones to watch. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll text you a week before. A week before, exactly. Please do that. Please do that. And all I just want to say is um, congratulations to the rest of the team. Uh, Zoe said she's feeling a bit shy, so she won't be able to join us. <laughs> but all the, to everyone behind the scenes, to Joe, to Thomas, Tim Diamond, Zoe, the other cast, the crew, everybody, congratulations. And I am hoping to host you all as soon as um, cook off is on netflix thank you so much jesse and joe i just want you to continue to uplift other youths in zimbabwe to also take yes. film seriously i mean look at yes. nollywood i always refer to nollywood because i look at those people they are in africa they are africans and their industry yes. i mean if you look at even nollywood the the amount of money they contribute to the GDP of Nigeria is much. It's not. It's not a joke. So I want to see that happening in Zimbabwe as well. True. True. Very true. Okay. Well, thank you so much, and guys, I can't wait to watch you all on Netflix. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. All right. Take care. You too.